Welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to be teaching an introductory tutorial on animation curves in Blender. So most of you should be familiar with keyframing on the timeline which is pretty simple, easy to understand. I will go over that a little bit but what we're going to be looking at here are these animation curves which oftentimes to beginners they can seem a little bit complicated but really they just give you an extra way of adding more more control to these keyframes. Um, you can just grab these little handles and move them around in ways which can make your animation look a lot smoother or have certain characteristics that you will that will make it more immersive, more realistic. So um, this is definitely more of a beginner tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it and that you can learn a thing or two that you can use in your day-to-day -day blendering. So uh, let's jump in and have some fun. So go ahead and jump into a new scene in Blender. I'm gonna be using Blender 3.2 at the point of recording this tutorial. Uh, more or less, it should be the same for you when you open up Blender. Now you can use whatever object you want. I'm gonna be using the default cube because it's already in the scene and it's quite intuitive. A thing you might want to avoid is going to be doing a UV sphere. The only reason I say that, because sometimes, especially if you have smooth shading, it can be hard to see if you're actually rotating anything. With something that is as well defined as a cube or something like that, you can really see if it's moving or rotating in 3D space. So that's probably another thing you can consider. But let's select the object we want to animate. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to your timeline over here, right? You can just click and drag it up. And over here by default, Blender has one, it starts at one and it goes to 250 frames. Now, um, if you were to hit the space bar or just click here and play, you can see this little thing running through, just like any other timeline you would have encountered. And when you wanna animate an object in Blender and not just have it sit there, what you can do is drag this little slider, go to a certain point in your scene, and at that point you can press I, and I is gonna bring up all of these keyframe options. We'll get to that in a second. But another thing we need to quickly explain if you don't already understand this, if you just press N on your keyboard, you're going to see the property panel pop up here. Okay, so I just pressed N. You're going to go to item and under here you're going to see these things called transforms. Now the transforms just describe where an object is in the 3D space. So you've got an X, Y and Z coordinate. What we're gonna be looking at today here is mainly the location and the rotation, but the scale is something you could work with as well. So let's just, for example, come here to frame 30. And right now we can see that it is in the middle of our world here. All of these location vectors are at zero. All of these rotation vectors are at zero. If we were to now come here and drag any of these or move them, we can see it moves over here. If we were to rotate, we can see it rotates here in the scene. What we could also do is just come here in the viewport and press G to move it. That'll mess around with our location and R will rotate. So just the exact same thing, just different ways of doing it. And all of this is gonna to relate to how we work with our animation curves in just a little bit. So if you ever wanna reset to these transforms, all you have to do is hover over these different vectors and you can just hit the backspace and the backspace and you'll see there it is, okay? So let's come to frame 30 just as an example and let's press I. And a keyframe is essentially just a way of adding in a marker for a specific value. So in this case, if we wanted the location to be animatable, we'll do the location. But we actually wanna do the location and the rotation. So we're gonna add in a keyframe for that. And now you can see it's marked over here. And if we were to now drag it to maybe something like frame 80, we can now come over here and mess around with these, or we can just press G and move it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my cube just randomly somewhere in the scene. And I'm also gonna double tap R and just rotate it randomly. And now in frame 80, if we wanna hold that new values here, we can press I. And we still wanna go with a location and a rotation keyframe because that is the values that have changed over time. So now if we were to go to frame 30 and we press the space bar, you can see over time, Blender is what we call interpolating between these different values here, between frame 30 and between frame 80. And that is pretty much the basics of animation um, in a 3D software. You can see here the scale. We could do the exact same thing for the scale. If you came to frame 30 and you went S to scale it, and then you, you, know, you can also, by the way, just as an example, you can come over here once you've changed any of these values on a f and while you're on a frame, you can come over here, hover over it and press I and you can also insert a keyframe that way. So now if we go to frame 80, you can see um, if we were to hover over the scale and press backspace, um, we can reset that and then press I again. So now all three of these different transforms, the location, rotation, and scale are at work over here. And that is a very good little demonstration. So now that that's out of the way, let's quickly get into our animation curves. Um, an easy way to do that is just to come over here to your animation workspace and drag this little window over here. And then what you can do is come to the drop down here and make that a graph editor. 
And these here are the animation curves. Now, at first, they actually look really complicated. In this video, I really, like I said in the beginning, I wanna show you guys that it's really not as complicated as you think at all. So let's quickly come over here, press N again, make sure we have that item here and we can see our transforms. And let's just use this as an example. Let's come to frame 30. Now, let's say we wanted to do something to one of these, um, these transforms here. We wanna mess around with some of these values. If you come here to the drop down, you can see here we have our object, our cube. We have our cube actions, and then we have our object transforms. And over here, it might look complicated, there's a lot of options, but all these things here are, are these exact same transforms we've been working with the whole time. It's just displayed over here for your convenience. So to make things a little bit simpler, let's just say, for example, we wanna work on the location, which we have animated here, but we wanna do it for the X location only. So what we can do is just come here, click, left click and just hold it in and just untick all of these so we don't see the little eyes. And then it'll make it a lot easier. Now it's less confusing. We have one simple curve we can see here and work on. So you can see what's happening here. Here we have our keyframe on this handle here. And over here we have the one that's on 80. Okay, so the exact same thing as what we have down here. It's just shown a different way here. So this gives you more control. So let's just say for example, at the moment it's moving from 30 to 80, right? What's happening here, if we come to 80, this handle over here, the X, if you grab that, this here, if we were to move it up by going G, you can see we move into the positive of the X, right? So let's just actually press one to go into our front view so you can understand this better. So if I were to grab that handle here and go G and just move it up, you can see that our location on the X is moving into the positive. See that? So over, at the moment, it's in the negative. Move it up. Over here, you can see it change to the positive. If I drag it down, you can see it's going into the negatives. So this here just represents how much on the positive and negative this cube at the moment is on its X location. And dragging the slider over time just represents where on the time frame that is. So it's a very simple concept. It's not complicated at all. And the reason this is helpful, and the reason you want to learn this in the animation the curve editor here is because sometimes you need to have a little bit more control. So at the moment, this might be a lot smoother of an action if we were to come here and grab some of these handles and just drag them and just make them a little bit more curvy. So I can click on this handle here, drag that one up. So what we're gonna get now, is we're gonna have almost like a little bit of a pullback and then it's gonna come back down into the negative dip down a little bit and come back up. And that kind of gives us a little bit of anticipation and a little bit of ease. So if we now come to frame 30 and we play the, play the space bar, we can now see on that X, um, it's functioning a little bit differently. And you can come through here and do the same with each one of these. It just gives you the ability to have a little bit more control with your animation. But this is a little bit complicated to really see what's going on here. So let's just um, delete these keyframes here. Okay, so just select them and delete them. And let's just come over here and just reset these by going backspace over these transforms. So now we're at the beginning and let's just come to frame one. And so we can better understand it. Let's just go I and insert a location and rotation. And let's come to frame 40 and then go G and move it over to the side. And then R just to rotate it and then go I, insert a location and rotation, All right? Now what we're having is it's starting here and then it is just slowly going up here. It's not a linear movement. And the reason is you can see this curve here. This curve is nice and smooth. So it starts a little bit slower, then it speeds up and then slows down. And this is what you call um, easing in and easing out. Now, if you were to select these keyframes down here and you were to press T, you can change it to linear. And now you can see it's linear. There's no longer any curve over here. So if you now were to come to frame one and press the space bar, it's just one consistent movement. There's no easing in and easing out. And there's gonna be some situations where you want that, but generally people tend to just, you know, have these set to Bezier, which smooths that out for you. So you can also come in here and exaggerate it a little bit more. So on the X here, we can come on the X location, grab that handle here on frame 40, and then just drag that up a little bit. We can click on this one on frame 30, grab its handle and drag it down a bit, and now we're gonna have almost the same thing, but before it goes forward, it's just gonna come down into the negative a little bit and then accelerate. So have a look at that when we now play our animation. See that? Just see how it hooks back just a little bit and then goes forward. 
And just that little extra detail can add a lot more realism to the movement of an object, make it look almost like a simulation, make the physics make a little bit more sense. Um, and the exact same thing applies for all of these different transforms here. So I hope you guys kind of understand what the um, curve editor is, how it may be useful, and definitely give it a shot, try it out, mess around with some of these handles here. Remember, you can turn some of these off to make it a lot easier. And just think in terms of the positive and the negative and how things are moving over time. Um, the more you play around with it, the more you mess around with the keyframes and the graph um, editor here and the animation curves, you really will start to understand it a lot more um, intuitively. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. That it makes a little bit more sense now for you how all this works. There's a lot more stuff that can be said. Um, I'll just quickly just give you an example. Um, I know this is getting a little bit long, but over here, if you press you select one of these um, transforms and you come over here and you press N, you can see here there is a modifiers option. So on top of these things here, you can come down and give them a modifier, for example, like a noise. And now it'll give a generated effect on top of that curve. So now we have a little bit of jitter. So you can come here, you can increase the scale to make it more bigger, a little bit larger waves. And you can also influence the strength. So now you have a little bit of that random noise in there, which can add even a little bit more um, natural unevenness or a little bit more jitteriness to your animation, especially when you're working with cameras and things like that, having that sort of noise um, can be really handy to um, add that shakiness to a moving object. So all of these things are fun to play with, definitely try it out. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.